Hello, Mario. In this video, I'm going to take a look at working out cuts and fills using the prismoidal method. So let's crack on and just have a look at an example. So here's a little example I've got. I'm just going to look at a, a part of a, a, a pond that we're going to develop. Now part of the pond is going to be beneath the existing ground. The existing ground has been represented here by the green contours. The pond itself is, um, here's the top of the pond here and then there's a, a sort of area around the top, a, fl a flat area and then batter slopes down to the natural ground here and battle slopes down here to the bottom of the pond which will be below the original ground level. Now we're going to use the prismoidal method. Now this method, one of the key things about the prismoidal method is that it, it follows on um, from the trapezoidal um, or Simpson's rule, I think it is. Um, it, it follows on from Simpson's rule, except where the in the graph situation or the two-dimensional situation, we have the height of the graph. Here we have the area of the cross section. Now it needs to have an even number of distances or gaps between the sections and an odd number of sections. You must have an odd number of sections to use the prismoidal method accurately or to, to actually use the prismoidal method. So in this case here we've got one, two, three, four um, bays or differences between the five sections. So we've got an odd number of sections. Now what I've done here is I've just, uh, this is all done by sketch and not accurate in any way, but just it's the intention is to give you an idea. So what I've done here is I've just plotted up what some of the sections will look like. So here's section 50 where you can see we've got embankment here with fill and these are the areas of these that have been worked out. They can be worked out geometrically when if you drew them up you could um, if you wanted to um, I'll just perhaps show that well if you wanted to you could divide each of these areas up into little triangles and then you could work out the area or alternatively um, you could use a planimeter a planimeter to do this work and work out these areas. So here we've got a fill on this side and this side and a cut here. Section 2 and 3 are pretty much the same. Uh, section 4, as you can see, um, comes up a little better and then pretty much goes just along the top of the um, uh, the bench or whatever you want to uh, call it there and back down to the bat of the other side. And then, of course, this um, section 70 at Chainage 70, um, that's just going uh, pretty much... Um, sort of up a little bit and a, a little bit of fill there but not too much as it starts to eat down to the natural ground here. So and I've tried to show them it's a good idea to try and line them all up. Here's our section or chainages 50, 55, 60, 65, 70. So we would just in this instance be working out the volume between 50 and 70. Uh, right right through there. Okay, so now the actual formula itself or the prismoidal method is based on this formula which is D over 3, D being the distance between the sections here, D over 3 and then A1 is the, uh, the, vol the area of the first section, in this case we're doing fill, so it's the area of the fill um, and AN is the area of the nth section. Now the nth section of course would be an odd number. In this case N is 5. So A1 plus A5. And I've just for 
just a little bit of ease here of identification I've labeled the sections 1 through 5 so a1 plus a5 plus 4 times the sum of the even areas so that's the that in this case would be 2 and 4 and plus 2 times the sum of the odd areas that's not including the so that's the other odd areas not including um, these ones here so in that case there the odd area the only remaining one would be um, 3 here okay number 3 so let's put the values in um, a1 167 of a fill that's the total fill um, a n has got 48 meters of fill and I should um, point out that these here would be um, these would be square meters not um, cubic meters as I have incorrectly shown there so we'll just cut those out for now like so using um, smooth draw 3 um, the program that I use to do this and then I'll just go back to the brush and I'll just tidy those up putting a, a squared symbol there and a squared symbol there um, I've cut out a little bit of that line there uh, inadvertently so we'll just fill that in there like so alright so these are areas so they're in square meters not cubic meters as I've shown there it's very it's important that you keep your um, keep your units relatively correct and um, because it can cause some confusion further down the track so we've got 167 and 48 plus 4 times the sum of the even numbers which is 2 so there's our 174 and 4 which is 63 meters plus um, the sum of the odd areas um, so the remaining odd area would be um, 110 there from 3 and we multiply all that out gives us 2305 cubic meters approximately equal to 2300 I mean, these these are at the end of the day approximations um, the accuracy would depend um, on very much on um, the value of the product and stuff like that so obviously the higher value the more that you would m more measurements you would make the more accurate you would be in determining the area cut value cut volume is just uh, pretty much the same um, again it's the distance 5 over 3 um, times 105 there is the uh, cut in the first one the zero cut in the last one so that becomes 0 plus 4 times the sum of the even areas so again we've got a 110 there and a 0 in the number f in the four position and then plus two times the uh, cut in the odd position which is 96 multiplying that out we get 1228.33 cubic meters um, which approximately 1230 cubic meters so that's a bit of an overview there of um, how you might go about working out cut and fill volumes um, in a series of cross sections using the prismoidal method. <laughs>